Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is platinum on top of gold, the monthly chart. So you can see we've had a dramatic move in platinum. Palladium looks very similar. And uh, let's pull up the weekly here. So you can see a very dramatic move down in platinum. Now, of course, platinum, in my opinion, is not really a monetary metal. Gold and silver are the monetary metals. Platinum and palladium, they're more, for me, industrial metals. Now, we know that the banksters have spent the last 100 or so, 150 years, trying to convince us that silver is not a monetary metal. Of course it is. It was created that way. But they've fought a war for a long time to try to make it so that it isn't. And so far they've succeeded. I don't think they're going to win. But clearly from this chart, the industrial outlook is very dire. You can see that we're plumbing the depths of what we did back at the bottom of the financial crisis uh, back in here. Now, admittedly, we haven't gone all the way back to the early 2000 prices. Uh, would I buy some platinum if it got back down to 400 bucks? Probably would. I did buy palladium in 2008. I bought some uh, Pamp Swiss bars back in here because I thought that it was absolutely absurd that I could get an ounce of palladium for 150 bucks. So I did buy, I think I bought like 10 Pamp Swiss bars or something like that. I sold them up in here somewhere and converted it to silver. But uh, so we're not anywhere near those types of lows with palladium, but platinum uh, is really getting killed. Now another chart we want to look at is oil, and that is really... Uh, going down hard as well. And you can see on the weekly that we really didn't spend too many weeks down at these prices. It was really just the end of 2009, the beginning, or the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009. Now we're actually spending a, a larger period of time down around these lows. So it, it's not looking very good for the economy. Now I think the reason behind it, the basis uh, for this and why all of this is happening has to do with China. I think that China's got a pause. They're kind of catching up to their infrastructure that they build out. Um, I think they're going to resume. But uh, in the meantime, when China slows down now, uh, the rest of the world slows down and that certainly affects these uh, industrial commodities, whether it's platinum, palladium, or crude oil. Now, I wanted to overlay this with the gold chart because I want to try to explain the difference. If you remember back in, during the financial crisis, the gold price really started to go down hard. And then what happened was it, it recovered for fairly quickly. We have to actually go out to the monthly to see that. Um, but this was the financial crisis and you can see what happened with crude oil and gold kind of uh, it followed crude with the initial collapse but then as soon as the bottom was found then gold rallied and you can see gold hasn't come back down um, so uh, they have kind of changed places that makes sense to me because gold is and silver is is a hedge against the system ending that's the way that I look at it I don't look at it like the traditional way you look at it. Well, gold does good during inflation. Silver does good during inflation or gold does bad during deflation or inflation, deflation. I don't really care because at this point we're looking at the collapse of the entire system and an asset that's going to protect you through the changeover to the new system, whatever that may be. And I also believe that the cryptocurrencies are another asset that's going to protect you. So I'm going to spend the rest of tonight's video to explain to you why I'm pulling all my uh, cryptocurrencies off the exchanges and why I think that uh, I'm saying goodbye to Cripsy because it, it's pretty obvious that um, there's some type of Ponzi scheme, at least to me. So 
let me take you over to that because I'm going to actually going to try to demonstrate in real time. I've been spending probably the last 24 hours or so trying to get my coins off of this exchange. And what has happened with this exchange, it's very similar to what you see with a bank run or what you see with uh, insolvent governments. Basically, if there's too many promises uh, made for what they have, they're going to find a way to renege. Now, they're going to they're going to couch it in all sorts of things. Um, but the bottom line is they don't have what they say they have. They can't uh, they can't fulfill all the promises that they've made. So uh, you can see here on my account here. I don't know if you're familiar with Cripsy. Cripsy really it's sad to see it go. And I and I do believe that this exchange will be bankrupt before the end of this year. I think that they're a, a sort of Mt. Gox situation going on. Now, I'm just going to try to do what I've been doing. I'll show you. Uh, first of all, let me go to the balances so I can show you all of the cryptocurrencies that they have on this exchange. And one of the reasons why I like this exchange so much is that they had a lot of the, altern the alternative cryptocurrencies listed that the other exchanges didn't list. So you can see here's the list, a huge list of, of cryptocurrencies. You can see my account value is down to about 1.4 Bitcoin now. I've been uh, fastidiously removing coins, but it is, a, it is a monumental battle to get coins off of this exchange. Uh, something else for you to note here, just so you understand, if you see this little wrench sign next to a coin, that means the wallet is under maintenance, that, and that means you're not going to be able to get the coin off the exchange. Now, that's not the fault of the exchange, and I will say there's a lot of things I liked about this exchange. Now, one of the most recent things that they did was that they required verification. I, I did not say who I was when I deposited coins on this exchange. You can see I'm Crypto Trader Man. They don't know who I am. I didn't supply them any information. Uh, but what they did was they did a withdrawal limit of $25 a day and $100 a month of equivalent value of cryptocurrencies. That was the big red flag. I had somebody that I work with say, hey, have you gotten your coins off of Cripsy? They're going to be limiting it. I said, well, I don't have too many on there anymore. Anyway, I had about three. So you can see I'm down to 1.4. So this 1.4 balance here is 145 Litecoins. Now here is a fresh Litecoin wallet that I've put on this computer. Actually, the bulk of my Litecoins are on another computer, but I went and downloaded and, and updated the blockchain on this wallet just so you could see me try to get these coins. Now the thing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is their instantaneous transactions. If you haven't seen the documentary, it's out right now. It's called The Bitcoin Gospel. It's on VPRO Backlight Channel. And uh, it's a 45-minute documentary on Bitcoin. It's fascinating. And, and it, show, it starts by covering Roger Ver, the Bitcoin Jesus. And uh, it really shows you the potential that these things have. So cryptocurrencies are things that you have the ability to transfer large amounts of money very quickly anywhere on earth but we'll see here that it's becoming very difficult to get your money off these exchanges and, and when that happens you know there's something wrong so let's go ahead and try to do this here I'll show you this live uh, you can see my withdrawals if I go to all of my withdrawals here you can see I tried to convert to Dogecoin to get them off and then there was a delay with doge so that didn't work but you can see my florin coins which i have i have millions of florin coins now i don't have any florin coins on this exchange i still have millions of them they're locked in wallets but you can see how many withdrawals i had to do because they would limit me down to withdrawals uh, the two things that happen is one your withdrawal just ends up forever pending and it never clears or uh the, the size of your withdrawal actually changes. So some of these where it says 12,000 flow withdrawn actually requested a couple hundred thousand withdrawn and they just reduced it and reduced it and reduced it. Um, just another sign they're going under. So let's let's try to do this thing live and I'll show you what I'm talking about 
And uh, that's how it works when they're struggling to survive. So we'll go to all balances and I have this 145 Litecoin left on here. Now I'm going to go down to Litecoin and when you click on the coin you can see not only uh, your options for withdrawal, but you can see the exchanges that it's on. So you can see that Litecoin is traded on uh, across with Bitcoin, across with across with XRP, which is some worthless coin, and across with US dollars. Now let me comment about this US dollar thing briefly. One of the big problems that happened with Cripsy was that they registered with FinCEN, they registered with the government. And the reason why is because they gave the option to trade those cryptos for US dollars. Once you start touching US dollars, then you bring in the government. Uh, as the Bible says, uh, when they tried to trap Jesus, they said, uh, is it lawful to pay your taxes? And Jesus says, bring me a penny. And they brought him one and he said, whose image and superscription is on here? And they said, Caesar's. And he said, all right, well then render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's. So when you use U.S. dollars, you are obligated to follow the rules of the government that issues U.S. dollars. And that's FinCEN regulations. Know your customer rule and all sorts of crazy uh, withdrawal restrictions. So in my opinion, it was a tremendous mistake for this exchange, which is really my favorite one, to subject themselves to FinCEN regulations by allowing trading in US dollars. If they simply would have not had a US do dollar option for any cryptocurrency and not allowed people to deposit US dollars. I didn't deposit US dollars, I deposited Bitcoin. If they would have not allowed people to deposit U.S. dollars, trade in U.S. dollars, or withdraw U.S. dollars, they would not be subject to any of these restrictions of having to force you to prove who you are to do business with them. So that uh, is water under the bridge. That horse is already out of the barn. There's nothing that could be done. So these are your options now. And of course, the option I want is to get off of their exchange. So you click on this and you get your withdrawal you can see I have a balance of 145 Litecoins. Let's go ahead and request a withdrawal of 100 Litecoins. Now, the next change is that there used to be fees for transacting in every time you did a purchase or sale, then they'd receive a percentage. You can see now they're charging you a fee to withdraw your coins. So. I'm trying to withdraw 100 Litecoins, but they're telling me that I have to pay a fee of 0.505 Litecoins. I'm only going to get 99.495 Litecoins, but that's better than getting nothing. So let's, uh, I have my password saved. Let's paste that in there. Let's jump down to the Litecoin wallet. All you have to do on this is click receive and request payment, and then I get an address. I'm going to copy the address and I'm going to go back to that screen and I'm going to paste that Litecoin address in. Like I said, this is a brand new wallet. Now, they want me to enter an SMS PIN code because I have two-factor authentication. The reason why I run two-factor authentication is because I've had so many Bitcoins stolen from me. I've had to do that on everything and I advise that everyone else does. So what I do is I'm holding my cell phone in my hand right now. I'm going to click this and then there's going to be an SMS pin code sent to this cell phone that I'm holding right here and there it comes in you can hear it and that is the code is A T R E 7627 now there's a number of ways of doing these there's a Google authenticator but the main thing is this two-factor authentication is that you have a device that you hold in your hand that proves that it's you so we're going to press process withdrawal and hopefully we're going to get a screen pop up down here saying your withdrawal has been submitted confirm so now i need to go to an email address and uh, this is the email address that is just for my Cripsy account you can see all of these emails uh, it uh, verifies when i've authenticated you can also see these emails that i've sent into them tickets with my coins are stuck, I can't withdraw, um, all these problems. So let's go to the inbox 
and we have a new email to confirm the withdrawal. We'll click this link and it says your withdrawal request has been successfully confirmed. So uh, you can see that my balance down here now I only have 0.4 Bitcoin value on there. They've already deducted that 100 Litecoins that I've requested to be withdrawn. So you can see I only have 45.64 Litecoins on their exchange. So let's go and see the moment of truth. Let's go and see if I'm actually going to get my coins. Now you have to remember these things should be instantaneous. I've already shown you in the past sending from wallet to wallet that as soon as I click send on one wallet, it, it pops up on the screen on the other one. So by all rights, if this were a real business and this were really working, I could go right over here to my overview and you'd see down here in the bottom right hand corner a pop-up incoming 99 point whatever Litecoins. Well, I have a feeling that's not going to happen. So let's go ahead and click on view all withdrawals and you can see that it's pending. Now I can just about guarantee you that this will be pending all night long. Uh, I did have this one I did the other night 180,000 doge coins that I tried to withdraw because I had heard a rumor on one of the message boards that if you converted your cryptocurrencies to doge they didn't have a withdrawal restriction on doge and you'd be able to get your coins out but that didn't happen for me probably too many people heard of that and started converting to doge and withdrawing and then they shut that down as well so this is the big sign of an exchange. I believe this exchange is insolvent. Now, anytime you have an entity that's insolvent, whether it's the US government or whether it's a bank, some people are gonna get their money out and some people aren't. Same thing with the Ponzi scheme. Uh, you know, with Bernie Madoff and the Ponzi scheme that they had, they actually had clawback restrictions where they uh, came to the people who got their money out and said you need to share with the people who lost all their money. For all I know, the fact that I identified who I am uh, just to be able to get past the $25 a day thing, maybe if I get my coins off here, they'll come back and try some clawback thing. So we'll go ahead and refresh this one more time. I don't have a lot of confidence that I'm going to see these coins anytime soon. And that's, yeah, highly unlikely. So since uh, I don't have any confidence that I'm going to get these coins at all, I'm just going to go ahead and do the support ticket right now. This is what it requires. I actually got my doge because of a support ticket. So we'll go ahead and uh, click the support option. And uh, you click here. And I have it set on the screen that I want anyway, so I'll take a screenshot you can see it's uh, that they're pending and I'll put my email address here I'm not going to go through that because it's not all saved so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a ticket in hopefully I'll get my coins um, if I take a 1.5 Bitcoin loss well that's the way things go so that's what's going on with Cripsy. I personally believe that they're going to probably go the way of Mt. Gox, probably some jail time for some people. They probably got hacked. I noticed that uh, there was a lot of double spend and double withdrawal issues, so they probably are insolvent. And that is kind of a microcosm of all of the governments of the world. They are all insolvent. They've made too many promises. They've made many more promises than they can keep. And some people are going to get their money and some people are going to get part of their money and some people are going to get nothing. And the big question is going to be, which one of those are you? And we'll talk to you next time.